Welcome to Near Min Condition, the home of Collected Editions. I am your host, the Uncanny Omar, and today I'm doing an advanced look at the June 1962 Omnibus from Marvel Comics. Why this particular date, and what stories are collected in here? Let's find out together. Before getting started, I want to give a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on May 31st or June 1st, depending on where you get your books. So speaking of book market, that's exactly the cover we're looking at here. This is the cover by Javier Rodriguez, and on the left-hand side is the cover to Steve Ditko's unused Amazing Fantasy number 15. I think later on they used it for the cover to Superior Spider-Man, the first OHC. It was the variant cover. Uh, but we've seen that cover recently, in, or at least in recent years. But yes, that's the unused cover for Amazing Fantasy 15, and that is your direct market cover. So that's the one that's only available at places like CheapGraphicNovels.com, Walt's Comic Shop, In Stock Trades, DCBS, Dying Breed Collectors, uh, Organic Price Books, or Reads Comics, depending on where you get your books. Everything else on the inside is exactly the same. But I love this Rodriguez cover. He did the one for the uh, August 1961. And here is the spine. June 1962. The classic cover to Amazing Fantasy number 15 right there. And then the covers of the issues collected in here. Retail price, $125. And make way for the Amazing Spider-Man. The thing that I love about these is that this is done in chronological order. So let's look at it underneath the dust jacket. You have that image there of Steve Ditko's Amazing Fantasy 15. And the image again from Amazing Fantasy 15, the actual cover they used. And then an image from inside of one of the stories here. Book feels really light. And I'm not talking about the page count. It reminds me of the type of paper that they used for Volume 1. So let's crack it open. Look at the artwork in here. Uh, talk about some of the stories. All right. Let's get this opened. You have some red and paper there. June 1962. Peter Parker. And here are some pieces of art. Uh, Jack Kirby, Jack Kirby, and Jack Kirby's Rawhide Kid. Uh, we've seen some of these stories collected before. Uh, so what is the importance of June 1962? Uh, here are the main writers, Stan Lee and his brother Larry Lieber. Uh, pencilers right here. Uh, Jack Kirby, Stan Goldberg, Al Hartley, Steve Ditko, Don Heck, Jack Keller. And some of the inkers here, letters. And most of the colors were provided by Stan Goldberg, Al Hartley, or some of the uh, artists that supplied the pencils. Here's your table of contents, and this is the most important thing to note. Much like the very first volume of August 1961, it is important to note that this omnibus features comics released by Marvel in June of 1962. Of course, it's a celebration of Spider-Man's 60th anniversary, uh, but note that the cover date listed on each issue's cover was not the date the issue was actually released. So some of these will show July or August, but they were released in June of 1962. Uh, and then to round it up so you can have that whole experience of what was at the newsstand during that time, you're also going to have stories in here like Rawhide Kid number 30 and Patsy and Hetty 84 which were released in July 1962, but would have been there at the same time that the Amazing Fantasy 15 was in there. So let's go back to this. Here's your introduction by Mark Wade and the stories that are collected in here. What page you're going to find each of the stories. Because remember, back then, a lot of these were anthologies. They weren't one continuous story. Here's a wonderful introduction by Mark Wade talking about the importance of what the June of 1962 was, because it wasn't just the beginning of Spider-Man, but also the beginning of Marvel superheroes. Yes, we've had the Fantastic Four in there, but it really didn't get started until Spider-Man came on board. Uh, so let's talk about some of the other stories found in here. So you're going to find Journey into Mystery number 83, which is, of course, the first appearance of Thor. That's right. 
And all these are in chronological order by the way they appeared in newsstands. So the first week of June, second week of June. Uh, but at the same time, that's crazy. I was just talking to my oldest daughter about this, that at one time you were able to find both the first appearance of Thor and the first appearance of Spider-Man at the newsstand. That is nuts. So collecting Amazing Fantasy 15, Tales to Astonish, number 35, which of course is the first appearance of Ant-Man. He had appeared before, but well, we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, then we also have Life with Millie, number 18, Patsy Walker, number 102, Kit Colt, Outlaw, 106, Fantastic Four, number 6, Linda Carter, Student Nurse, number 7, uh, Millie the Model, number 110, Strange Tales, number 100, Tales of Suspense, 33, Love Romance, 101, Incredible Hulk, number 3, Gunsmoke, Western, 72, Patsy and Hetty, 84, and Rawhide Kid, number 30. Holy crap, that... Some of these are collected for the first time in a collected edition. A lot of these, I'm sure, probably are like, oh, I already have that in the Thor Omnibus and Thor Epic Collection. Thor Masterwork, been there, done that. Um, but I can't remember if stories like this here have been collected. This is The Perfect Crime. It is written by Stan Lee, and the script is done by Larry Lieber. And it's drawn by Don Heck. So I can't remember if stories like this were collected... Because uh, they're not in the Thor volume number one because, well, it doesn't feature Thor. But since that magazine journey into mystery number 83 was an anthology, it's collected in here for complete sake. Now, of course, this story right here by Steve Ditko has been collected. I love this story, When the Jungle Sleeps, has been collected in the Master of Suspense Steve Ditko uh, omnibus. I think it's in volume two. So some of the stories have been collected here, even in... Uh, omnibus format, like the Jack Kirby Monster Bus, uh, two volumes. Uh, but here's Amazing Fantasy number 15, and it's pretty much just the two chapters that introduces Spider-Man to the world. Um, and then you have the Bell Ringer story arc in here. But uh, the importance of this is, of course, Spider-Man. So here we have a character that was due to fail because, well... Uh, at the time, DC, believe it or not, was actually publishing Marvel Comics. So it's their whole history behind all of this. And, you know, they didn't want Marvel Comics to compete with their superhero line. But they also liked money. So it was kind of a catch-22. It's like, what do you do? Do you let the competition that, you know, they're okay to print their goofy uh, romance uh, books or their westerns or their teenage books, but can they print superhero books? So it's interesting to see how much they were against this because there were so many things going against Spider-Man. He was wearing a mask. You can see his face. He's a teenager. Teenagers aren't superheroes. Teenagers are sidekicks. He was skinny. Superheroes are supposed to be muscular. Super muscular in some instances. But it worked because the fans demanded more Spider-Man. So, in this magazine, Amazing Fantasy number 15, I talked a little bit about it when I did an Amazing Fantasy overview, the, the omnibus overview, or, of course, Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1. Um, the, the magazine was getting canceled, so these stories are going to be long gone and forgotten. I love this story, too, The Bell Ringer, about a man that just rang a bell on this little island, and it's burning down, and, well, he just disappears. That's These are in the Steve Ditko Master of Suspense Omnis. But that's all she wrote. People demanded more superhero stories. So that's what Marvel decided to give them. And in one month, we got Thor. We got the return of Hank Pym. Now, Hank Pym had previously appeared in, what was it, Tales to Astonish 27, I want to say. But they brought him back in this with a costume and now with new powers. Able to control ants and also shrink himself down to ant size. And they made him into a bona fide hero. So now we have Thor, we have Spider-Man, we have Ant-Man, and of course we had the Fantastic Four and we had the Hulk previously. But the Hulk wasn't really a superhero book. It wasn't until... Here, let's skip some. Let's look at some of this other goodness in here. Um, it wasn't until Hulk number three that they established... Oh, no. He's a superhero. As a matter of fact, we're going to shift the focus of all our books. So books like... Kathy, unfortunately, you know, they got the axe or Tales of Suspense became eventually more of a focus book on uh, Iron Man and Captain America. Strange Tales, of course, eventually became the Doctor Strange book. Um, so books were getting 
shifted. I mean, we saw this in the history of comics before. We've seen it with EC Comics. Uh, let's talk about some of these things that have never been collected, though, like Kathy. Uh, this, of course, is no Kathy number 18. But just look at the restoration that went into this. The color palettes they're using. And what's interesting about this, I had no idea. Um, I, I think when I read the first August 1961 omnibus, I noticed it. But it was so much more noticeable here is that there was such a connection between the creators and their fans. Like, creators were sending out, you know, messages to the fans like, oh, please create costumes and hairstyles for our characters. And the fans would write back with designs for costumes and hairstyles, which is crazy. And then they were credited in the comic book. I mean, there are panels, like, every one of her shoes are created by these ladies that wrote in. Now, I don't know if, you know, some of them were made up or not. I don't know. I wasn't working at Marvel uh, during this time, or now, rather. But, you know, it's just really cool. We don't have that. Like, I felt so special voting for the freaking DC versus Marvel. Like, that made me so connected to comics when I was a kid. I'm like, I have a voice. But to actually have my designs on a character, like, I wonder if we could ever have things like this now. I, it's it, it's weird. I mean, it, it is definitely products of their times, right? Uh, so yes, this is Kathy, which is kind of like your Archie books. Of course, Patsy Walker, who has had an interesting um, history, not just because of the stories in here, but also what ends up happening to her and Hellcat and all of that. Um, but it's interesting that that's also part of her origin uh, but a lot of the artwork in here, this is uh, Sam Goldberg, I believe, doing this right here. Uh, or Stan Goldberg, sorry. Doing the Millie story and the Kathy story. And then we had Al Hartley. And Al Hartley's women. My goodness. Uh, here's your Tales of Suspense story that was coming out at uh, that time. Again, before uh, they had taken over by superheroes. We'll skip some through here to keep uh, looking so this is a very important issue oh the western here yeah let's look at this so we have Jack Keller stories from no nah, this isn't Rawhide Kid this is the Col uh, Kid Colt Outlaw that's how you have Kid Colt Outlaw here this is number 106 so I mean westerns were still selling I mean we were past issue 100 we're lucky today if we get a comic book I think we Consider it a success if it's over 24 issues. That means it's two years that it's been printed. Westerns were just a thing. They were everywhere on television. So, of course, Marvel was cashing in on that fact. And it wasn't just Marvel. There were several other companies that were doing the same thing. But then we get this classic issue. And this is a classic issue, which, again, has been collected in the epic format. It's been collected in omnibus format. But it's so important because this is the first team up with two supervillains. You have... Doctor Doom teaming up with the Submariner, or as my darling little astonishing, or I'm sorry, adjectiveless Alicia likes to call him, the Submariner. Teaming up for the first time, so two supervillains trying to take out our heroes. Uh, this is Linda Carter, student nurse, and again, you have fans making their costumes. Like, you never see guys' hairstyles designed by anybody, <laughs> or their costume, or their outfits designed by anyone. Uh, it's mainly the ladies, and it's always designed by ladies. I don't know. Maybe you people that have actually read all of these, let me know. Has there ever been uh, designs by men that have been on there? Maybe they didn't print those, or, or maybe they just weren't good enough to make it into the pages of the comics. But I am curious about that, because the ones that I found throughout this omnibus have been all um, created by ladies. So this is the type of stories, the restoration. You've seen this one here in the low, uh, Warren, what was it called? Warren Love and War omnibus. This is when I was like, man, Jack Kirby could draw some ladies. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, Love and Romance. Uh, when you have Vince Coletta doing the inks, my goodness, look at that. That, that is one fine-looking lady right there. Woo! Hubba hubba, as they used to say. Oh my gosh, I am showing my age. But, yeah, something different about his art back then. And then, of course, here's the Hulk, where he fights the, what was the, the ringmaster in his circus, um, where he is a bona fide superhero after this issue. So it was like Marvel was shifting the view of their characters 
and was focusing less and less on westerns and love stories and as the months would continue by the time we get to 1963 most of these books are gone and everything is now superheroes because that's what people were reading and of course it's a business so that's what would sell and that's what you would put out uh here's rawhide kid but looking at this jack kirby stuff of rawhide kid like this is the kind of collection I want. This is like if I had to pick one, yeah, it would be great to look at some of the Patsy Walker or Linda Carter student nurse um, to get oversized hardcover. But honestly, I'd have to go with Rawhide Kit. Like, I, I think his art is just awesome and it's so different in this type of setting. You know, this is a western compared to like a lot of the monsters that he liked to draw, or of course the superheroes that I was used to. I just think it's freaking awesome and the amount of restoration that they did and attention to detail to each line oh yeah you know say what you will this isn't a book for everybody of course uh but i know there are several people that got excited over august 1961 a lot of the stories that have been touched up and restored and this is the exact same thing as far as the extras in the back, we do have some of the extras that we've already seen. We've seen the previously uh, uh, unused cover here where Jack Kirby drew too many rock monsters. So they were like, hey, tone it back. We want to focus on Thor. We have some original artwork from Journey into Mystery, Amazing Fantasy. Again, things that you've seen. But yes, this is in celebration of, of course, Spider-Man. 60 years of Spider-Man. Crazy. And some more amazing fantasy original artwork. Can you imagine owning that? The freaking money that people are charging now for original art is nuts. Like, somebody has the original art? This is crazy. To the bell ringer, because it was only three pages long. Let's keep going through here. Uh, Tells to Astonish 35, the return of Ant-Man, of course. Now, is there going to be an Ant-Man Epic Volume 2? I think most of I've hinted at it for a while now, but I think most of you probably know the answer to that. It's kind of been leaked. But stay tuned to the channel to see the rest of the Epic Collections coming out from January to April of next year. Here's some original artwork from Love Romance 101. Of course, this is uh, Jack Kirby. Now, this is really cool. Uh, this is from the Marvel Comics, or the origins of Marvel Comics, uh, and it's written by Stan Lee, and he talks about how he got into writing comics, but he also talks about, you know, his brother, Larry Lieber, like, people were writing in, like, why didn't Larry Lieber, you know, why did he change his name, why why wasn't he, if he's Stan Lee's brother, why is he called Larry Lieber, and then Stan Lee talks about how he was really born Stanley Martin Lieber, and it was him that changed his name to Stan Lee, and he talks about why, he talks about his time in the service, and I think that's really cool that they put it in here. And of course, that's the origin of the Marvel comics, and then you have the introduction to the Marvel Masterworks Amazing Spider-Man number one, which is important, because that is the beginning to of Stan Lee's run and Steve Ditko's run. And this is an introduction by Dick Ayers from the Ant-Man, Giant-Man Masterworks. And then we have some Marvel Masterworks covers here. The Mighty Thor Omnibus. I love that they put all these extras in the back. So this book has 520 pages. Let's look at the binding. Here's the variant cover. And of course, the Marvel June 1962 Omnibus. And the little cover key here to tell you who each of these characters are. Again, drawn by Javier Rodriguez. Let's take a look at the binding. Just like August 1961, the book was printed at the iMac printer in Turkey. And this retails for $125 and has 520 pages. It is sewn binding, and here's what the eye looks like. Now, as far as the paper quality, it's the exact same paper that they use for Volume 1. The thickness, it feels different than the paper that they're using for uh, most of their modern omnis or just omnis that they're printing at the iMac printer as a matter of fact it's identical like the weight of this to 1961 the only difference is like this is actually using a glossy dust jacket whereas this is just flat there's no glossiness to it so i wish they had gone back to this instead of this i'm just so used to everything being printed in like this but that is it that is june 1962 um just out of curiosity, I, I said this the last time, I think, 
But I would love a March 1978 collection of Marvel Comics and then DC and everything else that was printed at the time. Because that was, you know, month and date that I was born. I was curious, like, to anybody out there in the comment section, let me know, you know, what month and year you want collected in an omnibus format to just signify, like, the, the month and year you were born. And if you don't want to date yourself, just leave me the month. Well, no, that wouldn't make any sense. That's kind of stupid. Uh, forget that last part. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up. If any of the stories in here interest you enough to see a complete omnibus of those particular characters or stories runs, like uh, Millie the Model or Rawhide Kid. I'd love to see a lot of these Western stories collected, but honestly, with the restoration that went into this, I'd take a Millie the Model omnibus. Anyway, leave those comments down below, questions down below. Don't forget to smash that like button. And more importantly, everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.